Kolaja. We begin with our top story. President Buhari opens mid-term ministerial performance review retreat on government policies, programs, projects. Governor Abiodo restates commitment to qualitative governance through adequate security of lives and property. The world celebrates girl child with focus on sexual abuse, digital technology. Burkina Faso opens trial on 1987 assassination of country's leader, Thomas Sankara. But life gets blurry at just a focus. Coming up on the business segment of the news, Brent crude eats at $3.99 per barrel. Details of this and more later on the news. I am Okmayemi Adewun. Stay with us. And on sport news tonight, preparations in final stages for six national youth games. This and more to come later on the news. My name is Moses or Jewumi. Once again, you're welcome. The federal government is reassuring Nigerians that the second Niger Bridge Lagos, Ibado, Expressway, and other legacy projects under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund will be completed within the second term of this administration. President Muhammadu Buhari gave the assurance at the opening of the two-day mid-term ministerial performance review retreat. The retreat, organized for ministers, permanent secretaries, and top government functionaries, has as its theme enhancing security fighting corruption and transforming the economy. Fourth in the service, the interactive engagement is designed to review the performance of ministries in the execution of programs and projects assigned to them upon appointment in 2019, identify key impediments and re-strategize on how to accelerate delivery of results given the current economic situation that will guarantee the level of impact we can be proud of by the end of our tenure. President Muhammadu Buhari is delighted that the tradition of subjecting government policies and programs to independent and critical self-review has taken firm root. And strengthen weak areas, close gaps, as well as build cohesion and synergy in governance to manage the economy and improve the delivery of public goods and services to Nigerians. Ministers are urged to work closely with permanent secretaries to ensure accelerated and effective delivery of the policies, programs, and projects in their respective priority areas. All issues relating to the implementation of the ministerial mandates must be taken seriously towards the attainment of the laudable objectives for our government. Government's notable achievements in the area of infrastructure, transportation, economy, electricity supply, the Petroleum Industry Act, among others, were highlighted by the President. The establishment of InfraCore PLC in 2020 as a world-class infrastructure development vehicle wholly focused on Nigeria with combined debt and equity take of capital of 15 trillion naira. We are growing the stock and quality of our roads, rail, air, and water transport infrastructure. The Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund projects are also advancing remarkably. These include Second Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Abuja Kaduna Zalia Kano Expressway, and the East West Road to be completed within the second term of our administration. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has been directed to consolidate effort at strengthening the work of the delivery unit under his coordination towards ensuring the effective implementation of policies, programs and projects in the last lap of this administration. 
deal made to empower the youth and other vulnerable groups by enhancing investments in our social intervention programs. I have approved the expansion of the National Social Register by 1 million additional households. We have established the 75 billion Naira Nigerian Youth Investment Fund to unleash the potential of the youth and to enable them to build businesses that will stimulate economic growth and create jobs. During the opening ceremony, the Presidential Priorities Performance Management System aimed at tracking projects in real time and with live data as unveiled by the President. In view of the importance government attaches to the retreat, President Muhammadu Buhari promised to sit all through the sections lasting two days to listen to the cumulative assessment of his administration's performance. He will also join the discussions on best strategies to implement planned policies, programs, and projects that can significantly diversify the economy and sustain the current economic growth trajectory. The State Governor, Prince Dakpa Biodu, has restated that his administration will do all that is required to ensure a focused and qualitative governance, especially through adequate security of lives and property. Governor Biodu stated this while receiving the new Commissioner of Police, CP Lanry Bankoli, and his counterpart, Mrs. Abimbola Likinyo of the State Director Security Service in his office at Okemoson Abiokuta. Governor's Office Correspondent Yusuf Ganyu reports. Barely a week that CP Edward Ajogu retired as the State Commissioner of Police and just as the State Director of Security Service, Mr. David Tosca, bowed out from active service, Ogun State Governor Prince Tapua Biodo officially received the new Commissioner of Police, CP Larry Bankole, and his counterpart, Mrs. Abimbola Likinyo, as the Director of State Security Service. While taking them through the Ishaya Mantra of his administration, Governor Abiodun said a lot has been done to strengthen the security apparatus, adding that they are coming to the gateway state should be felt positively on effort to hasten the social economic growth of the country. We welcome you to this state. We hope and pray that the interagency cooperation that has existed between the agency heads to date that has allowed us to achieve and record the successes that we have witnessed. It's a hope and desire that both of you will maintain this interagency cooperation. He also assured them of continued support in other ramifications in order to make the state safe for all. In the first instance we assumed office we purchased about a hundred patrol vehicles motorcycles, bulletproof vests, helmets, despite the fact that the police and all these agencies are on the exclusive list of the federal government. But being the gateway state, we took it upon ourselves to ensure that we give the needed support to our law enforcement agencies to provide the required security for all these people that have come by virtue of these aforementioned to either live here, to work here, to play here, or to transit through here, or to school here. Because all these put a lot of pressure on our social infrastructure. And of course come with those who have ulterior intentions. CP Bankoli and Mrs. Likinyo promise to be dedicated and committed to their duties. It's quite easy for me to keep to the mantra of the state, which says Ishaya. I'm here to contribute my modest quota to the progress of the state. And I can assure, as the Lord lives, they will enhance security in this state. I'm going to work together with the other security chiefs and we're going to ensure 
that the state is peaceful. The event was witnessed by all the service chiefs in Ogun State and members of the State Executive Council. Yusuf Ganiyu, OGTV News. The well Ogun State Governor Prince Tapo Abiodu has described the Afghan State Director of Security Service, Mr. David Tuska, as a man with high sense of responsibility, integrity and honor, whose contributions to the security architecture in the state cannot be forgotten. Governor Biodo said this during a St. Forth ceremony organized in honor of Tuska, held at Ukemoson Abiokuta. Again, Governor's Office correspondent Yusuf Ganyu reports. Life is not how far but how well. For this young man, Mr. David Tuska, the Director of State Security Service, is now retiring after attending the statutory years in the service of his fatherland, having realized his contribution and service service to the state and humanity. Augusta Governor Prince Takwabiodo said, Mr. David Tosca is a complete gentleman, diligent, and a team player. That has been with us since we assumed office. I've enjoyed working with him. We've all enjoyed working with him. I have found him as a very dependable person. Like everyone has said, he's a very humble man. He's very amiable very unassuming, a complete gentleman, but nonetheless very firm. I found Mr. Tuxa to be very diligent, very hardworking, highly effective, honest, and particularly a team player who strived and work to ensure that there was interagency cooperation and collaboration. To others, Mr. Tosca is a very dedicated officer and humility personified. And he has a way of generally uh, infusing tension when, when, when the teams are hard. Uh, and he tells you what you know that whatever you say to Mr. Tosca, most of all, you know, you still get the job done. His accomplishments, his contributions are indeed very loud. Whenever there's a Security Council meeting, he speaks very gently. He speaks his words, but in those very few words, there are profound elements of wisdom. Each time you see him at a meeting, uh, you can actually bank on him because he will give useful advice that will actually show us uh, the way. The outgoing DSS boss appreciated the state government for creating an enabling environment for all security agencies to work collectively for the peace and harmony of the states. Your Excellency, you make my work, our work, easy because of the level of cooperation we see from the state government. Presentation of various items that symbolizes the cultural compendium of the state wrap up the occasion. Yusuf Ganiyu, OGTV News. The Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Olakunle Oluomo, has attributed the success being recorded by the Ninth Legislature under his leadership to the existing mutual interdependence between the legislative arm and other arms of government, leading to the delivery of democratic dividends to the people. Honorable Oluomo made the remarks at a special prayer organized by members of staff of the Assembly, led by the clerk. Mr. Adedeji Adeyemo to mark the speaker's 58th birthday at the assembly complex Okemoson Abiokuta. Kola Wolyosho's report is presented in this package. Prince Ola Kunle Taiwo Oluomo was born in Ifo, Ogun State on Friday 11th of October 1963 into the family of the late first Olu of Ifo, His Royal Majesty Oba G.O.S. Oluomo Aloba 
at Jagungbadi I he ventured into politics in 1994 and in 2011 he contested as candidate of Action Congress of Nigeria and won the election to represent Ifo one state constituency in the Ogun State House of Assembly during which he served as Chairman House Committee on Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs and also as Vice Chairman House Committee on Justice, Ethics and Public Petitions. When ACN metamorphosed into APC, again in 2015, he contested under the party and was elected into the House for the second time. Graciously, he was elected by other members as a Deputy Speaker. His sterling qualities was again recognized by his colleagues in the Ninth Assembly, and this culminated in his election as the Speaker of the Ogun State House of Assembly for the period 2019 to 2023. As an achiever, the management and members of staff of the assembly, led by the clerk, Mr. Adedeji Adeyemo, appreciated him as he celebrates 58 years on act. I feel happy and elated that uh, he has allowed me to see another one year uh, of my life. A new one for that matter. The speaker lauded the existing harmonious relationship and unalloyed commitment of his colleague lawmakers and assembly staffers with an admonition to them to rededicate themselves to the ideals of public service to further contribute their quota to the socioeconomic advancement of the state. If they are not doing well, we won't succeed in the house. So it is their support that makes us to succeed. So as I'm thanking God for seeing today, I'm thanking God as well for giving me this set of good workers that are making things to happen in this house of assembly. We should continue to dedicate ourselves to the service of our state, do our job diligently, and uh, celebrate ourselves with ourselves like this when the time occurs. So on behalf of myself and my family, I thank everybody. In his remarks, the clerk and head of legislative service, Mr. Adedeji Adeyemo, described the celebrant as an astute lawmaker who was always ready to contribute to the development of the state and humanity. He has given us the leadership we desire for the emancipation of the institution of the legislature. And for that, there's nothing we give to him that is too much. Uh, for the staff, well, we are a family here. The Augustine House Assembly is one family, both career and political. So that's why you see all of us together as one. That has always been the case. It, uh, we have a very fantastic setup here, and we are grateful to God for that. The speaker was thereafter joined by the management of the Assembly to do justice to the birthday cake. Congratulations to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly. Still ahead, attention drawn to the welfare of the girl child as the world celebrates International Day. Details of this and other reports after this short break. You're still watching the OGTV Mid News. Wife of Ogun State Governor Mrs. Bami Dili Abiodun has called on critical stakeholders to partner with the current administration in Ogun State for collective responsibility in curbing the trend of child abuse and sexual violence in the state. Mrs. Abiodun made this call in commemoration of this year's International Day of Girl Child, organized by the State Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development. The event took place at Ogun State Sexual Assault Referral Center on Labisi on Obanjo Tech Hospital, Shagamu. Adebola Oshomoji reports. To enhance access to justice for children and vulnerable youth, as well as providing holistic and quality medical 
and psychosocial services to survivors of sexual assault and rape. Ogun State Sexual Assault Referral Center was opened in Shagamu this year. As the chairperson of Violence Against Persons Prohibition Management Committee in the state, wife of the state governor, Mrs. Bamidele Abiodun, in company of the Spouses of State Government Functionaries Association, SOXFA, with the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, led by its commissioner, Mrs. Fumilayo Ifuape showcases the equipped facility in commemoration of this year's International Day of Girl Child. This is going to be placed here okay. so that when you come you can read what they will do here. These ones will be distributed even out to Where? On the street, street market, we school, yeah. I want to uh, uh, let people know that they, feel, they should feel free to come here. They have um, capable hands they can rely on, that they can talk to. Because the issue we have is people speaking out. Mm -hmm. And that is what we want to, at the confidence we want to build in people that, yes, you can actually come out, speak out, and you'll get the best justice and treatment you need without being stigmatized. We want to assure all citizens that we will do what it takes to get justice to survivors. Yes, and yes, we will. Mrs. Abiodun urged various stakeholders not to relent in partnering with the state government in minimizing the occurrence of rape and not to underestimate its effects on the girl child in the state. I, I use this opportunity to seek help from other people. Let us have our social, let us develop our social responsibility. Um, let us try to help um, the people that um, that need the help because there's so many, so many times just to make the connection between the victim and the helper, and the, the helper is available. To, the victim is there, but there's no connection. So let us try and look for platforms like this to transmit and to give back to people that need help. Yeah. She also encouraged girls not to be distracted, but speak out whenever there were indications that their rights were trampled upon. Certificates were awarded to those who participated in combating gender-based violence training exercise. Men, women, and children who have either recently or in the past experienced rape or sexual assault would benefit from the free and comprehensive medical, counseling, and aftercare services provided by the center. Adebola Oshomuji, OGTV News. Young girls have been admonished to take advantage of the free education provided by the current administration in Nogu State, as well as tap into the opportunities available in information communication technology to sustain them in life. Wife of the former governor of your state, Mrs. Bukola Ladoja, gave advice during the celebration of International Day for the Girl Child, organized by the Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, Nawaj Ogun State Chapter. Adirunke Adeyemi's report is presented in this package. International Day of the Girl Child is celebrated to empower the voices of the girl child and create awareness on the importance of girls in the society. Every year, the UN celebrates International Day of the Girl Child with a team. This year's celebration tagged due to generation, our generation. This is why the Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, NAWOJ, Ogun State Chapter, joined the rest of the world in creating necessary awareness for teenage girls at the African Church Grammar School, Itaeko, Abeokuta. The host and chairperson, Ogun NAWOJ, Mrs. Modu Piola Shobukola, in our welcome address, enjoined girls to dream high and called on everyone to make the society a safe haven for the girl child. And so this year we are saying that because I'm a girl, that does not stop me from being what I want to be. If as a girl I want to be a doctor, we are believing that the society, our parents, schools should give us opportunity to be what I want to be. Speakers at the event made it known that the girl child is an ornamental vase that beautifies the world but digital generation may turn it to be a problematic generation if things are not well managed. As a girl child, I want to admonish you that you 
to actualize your life potentials if you are being careful. As you get shy, you will realize your life potentials if you know what you are doing. Make the best choose. Let today count. Invest your time in your studies. Because we are talking of digital generation, our generation, yes. Something came before the digital generation, which are the books. And you cannot make the best use of this generation without knowledge. The group also paid a courtesy visit to Brightway College, Lafenwa Abelkuta, where further awareness was made. Students, however, expressed their happiness on the event and called for more enlightenment programs such as this. This program has taught us a lot. It taught us to be focused, that we should not focus on only what the government can offer us. We should be determined to get to anywhere we are going to. I wish it could continue like this because it's really going to change the world because if a female can have such opportunity like this, she's going to rise up and be what she can. International Day for Girl Child is celebrated annually on the 11th of October. Aderunke, Adeyemi, OGTV News. And still talking about girl child elsewhere in Ogun State, the Inner World District has begun investing in the girl child with the hope of a better tomorrow. In collaboration with a healthcare service provider, Sese Health, the body also created opportunities for girls to increase awareness on gender inequality. Margaret Okunlala was at Anglican Girls Grammar School, Obali de Ijebude, an ultra modern health center, Udobulu, for the program. Her report. International Day of Girl Child is an international observance day declared by the United Nations to create awareness on issues affecting young girls with focus on their rights, safety, and education to make them active part of the society. In the spirit of unison and celebration, the Inner Wheel District 911, in collaboration with Ceci Health, organized an outreach to girls in Ijebode with Inner Wheel Club of Ijebode as host and pregnant women in Udubulu with Inner Wheel Club of Udubulu as host. The chairman, District 911 of the Inner Wheel Club, Mrs. Mudupe Uyedunton, reaffirms the club's commitment at ensuring safety of the girl child in her right. We are doing all of this because the inner wheel, international inner wheel thing for the year is pink first. And pink first is all about women empowering women. And the focus of pink first is to make sure that uh, women's health is uh, adequately taken care of. We educate them on how to take care of the health of their health. Also speaking was the managing director of CC Health, Dr. Yomi Jaye, who says investing in the girl child is equivalent to investing immensely into the future. Girls are great, girls are gorgeous. We also believe that girls are intelligent at the high. We also believe that girls, they will grow to be renowned, as we see in a lot of ladies and top organizations in the world today. And then we believe that girls are also the leading leader. When you allow the growth and the power and the strength of a woman to come out, we believe that a lot of things can happen. High points of the event were developmental talks and training sessions for the girls, donation of sanitary pads and shirts to the girls. To God bless them for organizing such a wonderful program because really learned a lot today. I'm very grateful to this program by teaching me all about what a girl child is and what to know about a girl child. I learn about how to care our bodies. As the Ultra Modern Health Center, Udobulu, the focus was on expectant mothers. I really want to thank them and appreciate them. I pray God Almighty will be with them and their children. They gave me this with other things. Other highlights were free medical consultation, donation of drugs, free eye tests, and free dental care. Margaret Ukunola, OGTV News. Now, every 11th of October is declared International Day of Girl Child. You can also call it Day of Girls, which makes it Toby Adejari's Day. The 15-year-old physically challenged girl who could not afford three square meals, let alone a school uniform, has now resorted to street begging to make a living. Luck, however, smiled on air in the course of the International Girl Child Day celebration 
and she will be back in school soon with most of her needs settled for the meantime. Bumi Adigo on this day takes a journey into the life of Toby Adejari to mark the International Day of Girl Child. This is Toby Loba Adejari on a normal day going through a daily routine. Toby crawls away through a distance and stops at her destination where she begs for money to survive. Bedeviled with a number of challenges, Toby Loba could only move by crawling. This good Nigerian met Toby trying to settle down for the day's business, and she decided to give a helping hand. I just walked past her, and I felt like giving her maybe a thousand or two. But I knew that if I give her that money, she'd just eat with it. And I wanted to know more, to know, because she, she wasn't looking, you know, tattered, like someone that doesn't have a home or anything, but there should be something more. If she could be going about begging for money, that means something is missing somewhere. So I didn't, I know that, I knew that the 2000, I would not solve that thing that I'm thinking about in my head. So I just went back to her. Immediately I left, yes, I took some videos and I put it on my status. With my own fund, I kept telling people what I know about, so convincing because it's, we see people on the streets, but we don't know their story. We will not be able to help them. So because I'm convinced enough to know that she's, she's, not, um, she's not ready to, you know, because I've been to her house, I've been to everywhere. So I started telling people that this and this we can do. At our home at Okeago, in a Berkuta local government area, reviewed more than this Nigerian bargained for as our father is late and the mother closed to tears while narrating to this audio. I was a prophecy before her birth that she was going to face many tribulations in life and I vowed to fight the war alongside with her. When she was five and she fell seriously ill, I was paralyzed by an injection she took. To be beautiful inside out, many of our neighbors attest to this and enjoy friendly disposition from people around her. Amoda is a family member and Toby is a good girl. She's just been affected by her physical condition. In the neighborhood, they call her with different pet names. For them, a day is not complete without the sight of Toby Loba. They confirm. We also took a visit to where Toby Loba begs for money and the people were happy to see her. She begs for money at this area and people used to give her money. Seeing her here today is a big surprise. We have seen changes in her life. It is time for Toby Adijari to go on shopping to give her a sense of belonging and she has to change her dress code to one of the new clothes brought by this good Samaritan and I look is stunning. Talk a little with this turn around. I feel a video. The effort of the Samaritan has helped in raising funds to take care of the needs of this girl who will return to school and part of the funds has been expended in giving her a special treat at a shopping mall. To be loved by Adijari is just one of the lucky poor girls out of many that Locke smiled at on this special day of the International Day of Girl Child Celebration. OGTV News. Congratulations to Toby Loba there. As Nigerians joined the world to commemorate the International Day of the Girl Child, the United Nations Children's Fund has revealed that in Nigeria, an estimated 1.3 million girls drop out of school each year before reaching the last year of lower secondary school, also known as Junior Secondary School 3. It is set to close the huge margin in comparison to that of the boys. Digital inclusion and specifically digital literacy is key, adding that this is becoming just as crucial to the well-being and success and the ability to read and write. UNICEF Deputy Representative Mrs. Roshan Morzata who revealed this in Abuja during the commemoration of the International Day of the Girl 
said adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable to societal dynamics that limit their transition from primary to secondary school. In the same vein, the Minister of Women Affairs, Dean Paul Pauline Tallinn, said the latest report shows that the average transition rate from lower basic education to upper basic stands at 58% for the northern state of Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Sokoto, and Zamfara. We are now being joined on our news by the barista, by barista Adit Damola Lapite to further discuss the issue of challenges being faced by the girl child in today's world. Barista Adit Damola Lapite is a child rights protection advocate. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me with you here tonight. Okay, we are talking about the, this day, International Day of Girl Childs, and I'll begin with the words of the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, based on this day. He said, and I quote, today 600 million adolescent girls are preparing to enter a world of work transformed by innovation and automation. They are the largest generation in history, largest generation in history, and a vast source of ideas and solutions for all career fields. Yet, far too often, girls are not given the space and opportunities they need to achieve their full potentials. Multiple barriers include systematic discrimination, biases, and lack of training, end of quote. Now, let's quickly take a look at the increasing abuses of the girl child in today's world. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, as I said earlier. Um, in the society now, uh, it's become too rampant for us to see that the girl child is being abused. Now, you know that abuse cuts across different areas, different segments, and... Um, so when we're talking about abuse, we're not just talking about sexual abuse, we're talking about um, emotional abuse, we're talking about um, physical abuse and all sorts. And it's a huge situation that we have out there now. Uh, the society, we, we, we know we live in a patriarchal society, we believe that once a man says something, that's final. That's why you see that quite a number of girls cannot even go to school. I've seen parents that will tell you that once my child gets to secondary school level, I cannot spend my money on a girl that would end up in a man's kitchen. Mm -hmm. So the girls that probably would have saved the society on a great level, we drop them. I was discussing with some students this morning and you know, we asked can you give us some of the women that have done great things in Nigeria? I, I asked them, NAFDAQ, after uh, Professor Akunyili left NAFDAQ, what have you heard about NAFDAQ ever since after that? Nothing much. If you read about um, um, Ransom Kuti, from Malaya Ransom Kuti, the things that she did, women have it in them. But abuses are robbing us as a nation as a people of the impact that women can do for us. But, but when, you, when you, you know, comparing the women you talked about with this generation, would you say the gener this generation has the same opportunities they had then, or they didn't even have any opportunity then, yet they excelled? I think they, the present generation have um, a, a better chances if they're given the opportunity. Then it was worse. Mm. Women shouldn't speak. The women who spoke then were basically even seen as outcasts. They were seen as abnormal. But now, we still have people speaking for the women folk. You understand? So they have better opportunities, but shockingly, we still have some of us in the society that still try to suppress women. So the problem is not as if there are no opportunities, but the problem is that more people are trying to suppress now. 
the voices. The voices. Okay. Uh, um, you talked about education, and I remember that during the lockdown, yes. you know, the students and teachers had to rely on online teaching and learning, right? So what can you say are the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on the girl child? Well, um, it's rather unfortunate that um, during the COVID-19 era, of course, it has changed the face of our society now. Um, you see that education, in fact, there are some schools that now you can do a whole course online. Mm -hmm. It should even open up more opportunities for the girl child. But the unfortunate thing is that a lot of people still find it difficult. They even, even adults, parents would wonder, what are you doing on phone? What are you doing with a tab? Come on, get into the kitchen and go and prepare something. Come on, go and do this. They can't still see the girl child sitting down to do things online. They rather tell them there are a lot of things to do in the kitchen. There are a lot of things to do. You still need to clean this up. But we cannot shy away from the fact that we are moving fast. This is a digital age. And this is a great, we have now have greater opportunity to allow the girl child to flourish. You know, in those days, if a woman gets pregnant, that probably will be the end of school. But now, with the digital age that we are in now, there are greater opportunities. Even during pregnancy, they can still continue learning digitally. So I think this has given more opportunity, but we need to encourage people to allow the girl child advance. Okay, now the theme for this year's um, celebration is digital celebration. Digital generation, our generation. So how can the world make this place a better place for the girl child? From the um, theme. The theme. From the theme. Um, you see that, just like the explanation I just gave, we're in a new era, the digital era. Give the girl child the opportunity. See things change. For me, I believe that the girl child has something heavy that they carry and the opportunities to move them. Look at um, Chimamanda Adichie. See the wonder she's performing in the field that she has chosen. Look at um, Dr. Ngozi um, Okojo Iwela. Look at the wonders she's performing there. The woman, the women folk carry something solid on the inside. Let us, this is the time. Let's allow them push it out. And they can sit in the corners of their house in Ipokia. They can sit in the corners of their house at Abigi and, and send their thinking. And it will be heard in, in the United States of America. Let's not bottle what they carry on their inside. Okay. Let's allow okay. them explore. Okay, now, now let's quickly talk about the roles of stakeholders in all of this, especially the media. Yes. Now, um, there's a lot to do. There's a great lot to do. And um, it's in the area of letting people know. Because you see, a lot of people out there, when you question them, that's when you know that some of their thinkings are warped. Let us educate. Let them understand that the, the life of the girl child should not be limited to the kitchen. It should not be limited to me. Some jobs, you know, when you talk about picking a career, they start telling you, hey, go and be a teacher, go and be a nurse, <laughs> and all that. The girl child can be anything that they choose to be, and That's they can right. excel in it. Sure. Let them have the opportunity, but we need to let people understand that these people can achieve. Okay, thank you so much, Barista Adedamola Lakute, uh, Child Rights Protection Advocate. Thank we you. really appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Barista Adedamola Lakute, a Child Rights Protection Advocate on International Day of Girl Child.
Moving to other stories, every 10th of October is celebrated as World Mental Health Day. The idea was conceived to raise awareness on mental health issues around the world and to mobilize efforts in support of mental health. In correlation with this, Association of Psychiatric Nurses of Nigeria, Aru Abiokuta Okun State, organized an event to mark the special day. Ayo Deji Oluwumi's report. Mental health is very important at every stage of life, from childhood and adolescence through adulthood. It includes emotional, psychological, and social well-being, and also affects how we think, feel, and act. In our welcome address, Chairman Association of Psychiatric Nurses of Nigeria, Aru Abeokuta Chapter, Comrade Jiboku, stated the importance of Mental Health Day. This year, the team is focused on mental health in an unequal world. Mental health is an integral part and a very important aspect of health, which is very vital to individuals, families, and then the society at large. This team was chosen by a global vote, including WFMH members, stakeholders, and supporters, because the world is increasingly polarized, with the very wealthy becoming wealthier and the number of people living with poverty still far too high. Speaking on behalf of Head of Department Nursing Clinicals, Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Abel Kuta, Olabisi Oshisowu spoke extensively on the theme, Mental Health in an Unequal World, as she advised on contentment. We don't need to strive to become what we are not. Because if we strive to become what we are not meant to be, we will overstress ourselves. And at the end of the day, it will affect our mental health. In his keynote address, Chief Nurse Tutor, School of Psychiatric Nursing, Arabe Okuta, Dada Joseph Olorun Shola, unveiled various ways at which inequalities ranging from cultural, economic, to ecological influences can cause mental health challenges. Overall action is needed across government and community, taking a better height in all policies. Our whole community approach should be community approach. To succeed, policy makers and leaders across government should apply a better height lens to their policy areas. In their goodwill messages, government at various levels are enjoined to subsidize the cost of medication in public hospitals for even distribution of medical services. High point of the occasion was the cutting of the cake to commemorate World Mental Health Day 2021. Ayodeji Olumi, OGTV News. It's time to join Okweyemi Adeomi for business news. Welcome to the business segment of the news. Brent crude at 12.50 p.m. on Monday eat $84.50 per barrel, according to the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Its data indicated that the black gold gained $2.11 per barrel to rise at 2.56%. The surge followed a rise in demand for energy that resulted from rebound activities in the face of the refusal of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, to increase supply. Oil prices rose more than 2% on Monday, extending gains as an energy crisis gripping major economic show, no sign of easing amid a peak up in economic activities and restrained supplies from major producers. The Manufacturer Association of Nigeria and the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry have expressed concern over the plan of the federal government to impose more taxes and levies as stated in the revised 2022 budget. The Director General of MAN, Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadri, said the proposed exercise duty on carbonated drink will further strangulate the manufacturing sector already burdened with multiple taxes, levies, and fees. And that rounds up the business segment of the news. Back to Mujisola.